G'day fellas and welcome to a video where we're going to be talking about some quite serious drama. Uh, this is drama that's unfolded in the last couple of days uh, and I'm going to be going over a post on Reddit. Um, now before you, you click off the video, uh, what I would like to let you guys know is that Golden League has officially begun uh, when this video is uploaded onto YouTube. Golden League will be live after about an hour or two, so go check them out. I'll leave a link in the description. And that's exactly what this is about. This drama is about Golden League. This post is from the creator, the founder of EGC TV. His name is Pesty. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. And he posts on Reddit here talking about some of the issues that he's had. So we're going to go through the post briefly. Then I'm going to give you my perspective and we'll talk a little bit about this situation because as with all drama, everybody's got an opinion. Let's get down to it. So he says, for those who don't know me, I'm Pesty, the founder of EGC TV. I made it a Reddit account as myself for this because I want to be clear that these are my own thoughts and feelings about the recent commentary around Golden League 2. And I get it. As a tournament organizer, my job is to be in the background. I try to stay out of things and keep the spotlight on the players and audience, only popping up for a few words two or three times a year after our major events. More than that, there's surely not a worse time for something like this than the eve of a major tournament. But here we are. Things have gotten to a point with my Age of Empires 4 journey that I need to say my piece. This isn't an order to defend EGC TV as a project or justify any of our work or decisions, in fact, far from it. Doing something like this is highly damaging for a brand and we will have a negative impact uh, and will have a negative impact on this event and our project. So if people think that this is unprofessional or inappropriate, there's no need to say it. I'm aware of it. But I feel, however selfishly, airing my thoughts is more valuable to my sense of well-being as an individual than it is damaging to what I'm building. And I think this is really important, okay? I just want to take a break out of this because you guys might have noticed that recently on my channel, I haven't been posting a lot of content. There's a good reason why that is, and that's just because I'm quite really not interested in the game at the moment. I've had, I've had my hands on the pup, and I can't think about anything other than the pup. And it is counterintuitive for me to even consider going back and casting the old, the old quote unquote, the old patch, because I know I'm, I'm going to be there and I'm, not, I'm just not going to be passionate about it. And by the same token, Pesty is coming out here and saying that I know that this is going to be harmful. I know that by not posting videos, that's going to be harmful. Pesty knows that this is going to be harmful for him and that it's damaging to what he's building. But at the same time, because of his sense of well-being as an individual, he's going to come out and do it. So I respect that. This has always been a passion project for me. While I've always believed and still do that EGC will be viable, uh, will be a viable business. I got into it and continue with it because I love Age of Empires. My invol involvement in Age of Empires 4 as, has been massive, oh gosh, sorry, as well as being a massively risky and expensive exercise has come at huge personal opportunity cost for me and could never have been justified were it not for a love of the game and the community. Age of Empires isn't only my favorite game, it's the only game I've played. I do have quite a long story about how I got into Age of Empires 3 and the oversized impact it had on my life before EGC, but that's a post in it of itself, so I won't go into it here. So for anybody who doesn't know, uh, Pesty, um, I probably shouldn't out him like this. So on my YouTube channel, I've got like a, a little, an email that you can contact me with. And it says like, you know, business inquiries only, but a lot of people do spam it and like, Hey, Drongo, I've got a, a you know, a really cool tournament idea. Let's do this and do that. Anyway, Pesty. Uh, message me through that email. I was like, hey, Jongo, I've got a really cool tournament idea. I, I, you know, I'd love to talk about it with you. And I, I was just like, it's another one of those guys. It's another one of those guys. Uh, and so I just put him in the spam box. I'm like, all right, in, in you go. Like, because you got to understand at the end of the day, like if, if I'm getting 25 emails a day and it, it does get to that point, I, I, I just can't respond to all of them. Uh, so he, he goes into the spam box. Uh, but anyway, I, I was streaming later on Twitch and he donated, I think he donated like a hundred subs. And I was like, what the hell? No one's ever done that before. And then he was like, hey, can you check your emails? I sent you an email. I'm like, actually, <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you can you send me that email again? That, that, that one is gone. Any, <laughs> anyway, let, let's focus on, on, on the issue at hand here. So over recent months, this passion project built with love and passion has progressively brought me less happiness or joy. And to go further, it's increasingly brought me real unhappiness. A lot about the project has started eating away at me, and that feeling has grown to the point that it is bordered on intolerable. For the main part, I have ignored it, essentially gaslighting myself into thinking it's all in my head and powered on with my ambitions for this scene. But it has been reached a point that I cannot continue, at least in the way that I had envisioned. While this has been progressive and the result of multiple circumstances, I can point to three examples of what has led me here. The first is that Lord Petito, 
our admin that works far harder than I can properly reward him for, started complaining to me more and more about how he was being treated by and talked to by some, not all, pro players. What he'd started with was a very occasional complaint or minor dramatic escalated into a non, not infrequent occurrence where he'd be treated disrespectfully and unpleasantly. He'd asked me if we could ban them because it got so unbearable he didn't want to speak to them. In the name of wanting to de-escalation, or wanting de-escalation and less drama, I'd often ask him to try and turn the other cheek and ignore it. Shame on me. Now, this is a really interesting point that he raises because this is something that I've noticed as well, it, it, that as a tournament organizer, um, and I guess as a, as a creator in the community, that there are, there are certain parts of the, the community that are... <sighs> The, the best way to think about it is like you're you're going to a restaurant right and you're being served dinner there and you can either be an asshole to the waiter or you can not be an asshole to the waiter and it's not going to change the outcome like it at the end of the day if someone got the order wrong right like you just say hey the order wasn't right if we could just fix it that would be great but that's not what happens what happens is it, it, for some reason people just are assholes <laughs> and it really fucks with you and, and, and that's exactly what i mean pesty's saying here with with lord petito it really fucks with you and it really makes you question everything that you do it 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 makes you say well why am i even doing this you know like i'm hosting because i've been in that position as well you know even though i don't host as many tournaments as egc tv they're, they're obviously quite prolific i've been in that exact spot with, with players that have been that exact way and it just makes you go well I'm not getting anything out of this. I got to get up at, at 2 a.m. to cast this stuff. I, I might as well just put it on, on YouTube and, and not have to worry about live streaming it and ban you <laughs> from the event. So anyway, uh, th this, is a, this is a massive one, I think. And it just comes down to like basic respect. So, I mean, th there's going to be people in the community um, that, that will know uh, who the uh, who, who the, the, the main people are that, that would be subject to this. And I'm not going to out anybody. I'm not going to name and shame them. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're going to call on them and ask for, for better behavior. I guess that, that would be the main thing. All right, the second revelation was at the main event of Red Bull Wallalo in Heidelberg. With the aforementioned issue already beginning to eat away at me, I noticed something else that was significantly less subtle. From the moment I arrived, just about every time I bumped in a, into an Age of Empires 2 player that had ever so much as played one competitive game of Age of Empires 4, they'd come up to me and say a few words of thanks and encouragement for what we had done for the game. A game they weren't even playing, from the likes of Viper to people like Doubt, who I surely didn't pay out more than $100 to and who did little more than dip his toe into the game, they all came up to me to pass on their thanks to our team for running the events for them. For every one person from the Age of Empires 4 pro community that had a word to say, 10 from Age of Empires 2 that had gained absolutely nothing from our project would come up to me. I must at this point mention a few caveats. Firstly, the Age of Empires 4 viewing community was a strong exception to this. They are absolutely incredible, warm, supportive, and wonderful. And I left having gained so much inspiration and encouragement from so many people I met there. The same goes for the casters and all the teams involved directly in the game. And despite the above, we have absolute gems in AOE4's pro scene and many are literally some of the nicest people I've ever met. A few even reached out to me before making this post with words of encouragement. So I think this is another really interesting thing. And this is something that Pesty touches on later on in the post but i think as a community it's really important that we rally together because at the end of the day we're not league of legends we're not dota 2 we're not a huge community we're a pretty small community when you look at the 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 active users the monthly active users it's it's it's, it's absolutely it, it's it's minuscule it's tiny so we need to do everything that we can to retain people you might be new to the game right now and you maybe you've only just started watching videos of mine in the past couple of days. You might have only just installed Age of Empires this week. You're the person I'm talking to because you're the person that I want to keep coming back so that we can play together, so that you can play against other people and so that the player base builds up. Because at the end of the day, that's what matters. What matters is the player base, the, the numbers of people that we've got coming in to watch events. And I'll talk more about that later in the video. But the reality is that we need to be we need to be sticking together. That, that, that's it. So we'll move on. Let's go on to the third point. The third, and really the straw that broke the camel's back, is Beastie Cutie's 45-minute criticism of Golden League 2 on YouTube and the subsequent follow-up post and comments on this subreddit. 
Now, I want to be extremely clear and upfront on this and make sure that I'm not misunderstood, but I'm quite sure that the follow-up is going to misrepresent what I'm actually saying. Yes, pro players can and should criticize rules and formats and events in general. We're not immune from mistakes or and criticism. Yes, anyone, including pro players, can use their platforms exactly as they want. I do not question it. I do not seek to prevent it. The scene is better and more interesting when players speak their minds and share what they think. We all agree on that. But as I said before, this is all a passion project. And when we're at a point that 45 minute videos are being released without warning, three days before a major S tier tournament, specifically designed to hurt and undermine interest in our event, no matter how many still watch it, by those I'm trying to make sure benefit the most from all that hard work. It, it makes me question why I'm doing this in this specific community. And the conclusion I reach is that there has to be a point where I reevaluate. To be abundantly clear, this is not about that video in of itself, but what that video represents. That video was for me, the final nail in the coffin of understanding that I cannot count on the most important stakeholders in this community to bat on the same team as us. And without those people batting on our team, we cannot realize our dreams for this scene. When I watched that video and then read a mocking post here on Reddit, I felt a real emptiness, a total disbelief. This is the way a small team doing their best to run esports events for a niche community is being treated by folk who we give a lot and ask nothing. And again, this is not about criticism or an ability to accept criticism in good faith. This is always, always has been appreciated and welcome. It's about the fact that me and my team have gotten to the point of feeling a real unpleasantness and unhappiness in our work. And when we're not the first tournament organizers in this scene to have been left feeling that way, maybe just maybe it's a wake up call for some soul searching. Age of Empires 2 esports scene has been and continues to be an enormous success primarily because all of the stakeholders in the scene bat towards the same goal. I'm sure they have plenty of criticism behind closed doors, but when it really comes to it, when it comes to facing the public, everyone understands that they need the tournament organizers to thrive and that everyone benefits from that success. Their recent Grand Melee event couldn't be a clearer example of this. I hope the organizers won't be offended by me saying that the event had lots of teething problems. That is fine, it happens. It's part of the business. We make events, things go wrong and we try to get them right next time. But no matter what went wrong, there was barely a peep of negativity coming from the pro, pro player community only hype, excitement, and appreciation. And as I watched, I only felt this overwhelming sadness about our inability to build a community with the same warmth. What you might not see from an audience po point of view is that we have probably gone further than any esports organization imaginable to make our events enjoyable for the players, not just the audience. We have constantly and consistently adapted around player criticism. We even have a dedicated group of the top 10 players that we use to collect feedback and thoughts and make sure we don't do something unworkable. The number of times we've adapted rules or structures to make this a better and fair experience for the playing scene is endless. Most recently by extending the paid places to 64, something that is healthy for the scene, but almost impossible to financially justify as an organizer. I've now gotten to the point where I feel in my heart that I will never be able to count on the support I need in this scene to do what I originally set out to do. That means that even when you don't agree with something, you try to support the hosts that are investing in you and the project as a whole. That you view tournament organizers are your partners in this journey, not some faceless corporation with whom you're playing tug of war. My AOE idol has always been Aussie Drongo. Hello. And the one thing that sticks with me is that every time I ask absolutely anything from him, he thinks about it in both, or both in terms of what he gets from it and what the entire scene and community gets from it. And he'll go as far to do something that is financially and time negative for him personally, because he wants to be a part of a happy, healthy, and sustainable scene, and to play an outsized role in doing it. That, to me, is the epitome of a team player. I really think that def defending Golden League 2 itself is not the point right now, but I'll devote a short paragraph to it anyway. Golden League as a concept is about having three unique stages with vanilla qualifying and finals. This is exactly what Golden League 1 was, which I believe remains the most watched AOE 4 event to ever by total minutes and was by just about every account a huge success. This is the concept. We do vanilla events year round and Golden League is where we have a little fun and test out players with some very formats. The last 1v1 major series that we did was five months of weekly vanilla tournaments, 18 separate tournaments, each with the same unchanged vanilla format 
Golden League is designed specifically to be the antithesis of that. And quite frankly, until Beastie Cuties video, I did not see much of an inkling of anything other than love for the format and excitement for the event from the broad community. The video did not follow months of community discontent, but came all three days before the event. And as much as anything, the idea that it is so dramatically and wildly unconventional is a myth that's been invented for dramatics and clickbait. So he does a little bit of a recap, but I, I, I think one of the, the things that I, I will just talk about here is is just obviously he mentioned me, so I, I want to talk about this, but th this is this to me is 100% it uh, from, a, from a creator perspective, because I mean, Pesty is right. Like the games that he has got, that he's hosting in, in Golden League, they're, they're public games. Anybody can cast them. So if, if you were going to look, right, at the way that my YouTube works, now, obviously, in the last couple of weeks, you can't really point to that and say that that's how it works because that's, that's not, that's not uh, status quo. Status quo is two videos a day. But on a typical cast or Golden League or on a typical EGC TV stream, I might do 12 games, 14 games. That's seven days of uploads. That's a, that, that, for me, that's a lot of time that I'm investing into that. And of course, I, I get paid for that, but I don't get paid anywhere near as well as what YouTube would pay me for those seven days of content. And so what I'm doing is 100%, you know, time negative uh, and, and financially it's a, it's a negative thing to do, but it's about understanding that I want the scene to be sustainable and that I think everybody needs to understand that we have to work together for the scene to be sustainable, which is why... Whenever you watch a, a video here, I will m do my best to make sure that I am casting streamers. I don't cast random Joe Blow from the ladder. I don't cast, I, I, I typically avoid, even if they're a, a top level person, I, I always, almost always will be casting a, another content creator. And the reason why is very specific. I wanna shout them out and I wanna call out their Twitch so that anybody who's watching, whether you're new, whether you're old, might go over there, check them out, hit the, hit a follow button, and get yourself further involved in the scene. Because the more interested you are in that scene, or in this scene rather, the, the more that you invest yourself in here, the more likely you are to whether buy the game, or if you've already bought the game, to play the game. And if you're playing the game, you're gonna boost up the player base numbers. And if people are getting games more quickly, then people are gonna be happier with those games. And it's just like a whole ecosystem, a whole circle of life that just works. And because you're happier playing the game, it means that you're going to spend more time watching my content. It means you're going to spend more time watching everybody else's content. And it means that you're adding to the statistics that we can point at when we want to host big tournaments. And we can say to our sponsors, like, hey, look how, much, look how many viewers we're going to get. This, this is how many viewers we expect we're going to get. And it all just comes back down to that. It, it's about everything working together in, in an ecosystem uh, and, and making sure that that everything that we that we've got is working together and i think that that is that's what pesty i mean he's very clearly stated it the age of empires 2 scene understands that they've been around for a long time so they they have worked from a, a position where they have been a very small scene now that they're now they're becoming you know quite a formidable scene it's a very consistently growing uh it, it, it it's an an enviable scene honestly i i envy the uh the love that they have over in that scene it is a it's a beautiful thing to watch, you know, all the time that I've been at the lands and I've seen the AOE2 guys together. I mean, they, they look like brothers. It, it's, yeah, it, it's just, yeah, it's, it's a great thing to see. But anyway, uh, let, let, let's continue through Pesty's post and see, see what else there is that he's got in here. Anyway, I don't really know how to wrap this collection of thoughts up except to say this is how I'm feeling. I no longer feel like I'm part of a cohesive community and team. I got into this thinking that we're all in it together, but I don't feel that way now. And that, will, and, and that it will change. One more reminder. Most AOE4 players are incredible, kind, warm, and generous. And seeing as I won't go naming which ones I've found not to be this way, I'd ask the community to continue treating every pro as if this applies to them. And I'll go further to say that just because I'm particularly disappointed by Beastie Cutie's video doesn't mean that he's not in the warm, kind, and generous category too. And he, and he is, honestly. He, he is absolutely warm, kind, and generous. Every single time uh, I've spoken with Beastie, except with the, the AI times, when, we're not going to talk about the, the, the AI... I, pro I probably shouldn't joke in a video this series, but um, yeah, like obviously this that that's not specifically pointed at, at Beastie Cutie. That the, the that was somewhat the catalyst of this, but it doesn't necessarily mean it was the cause of it. I read this back to myself and imagine that most people reading this will think I should just be more thick-skinned about the whole thing, and that's okay. They're probably right, but in the end, we all just do our best, and I feel like I'm reaching the end of my best. It might look vain, but it has simply begun, felt exhausting and relentless, and where. It, 
It wouldn't have mattered to me in any other game or business pursuit. Age of Empires is very personal to me. And so it all felt very personal to me. And I think this is probably, you know, something also that he mentioned earlier, Pesty, uh, was that it was a significant opportunity cost. So for anybody who doesn't know what an opportunity cost, it, it's where in your life you're, you're faced with a decision. Do I do A or do I do B? And these are typically mutually exclusive. I can become, you know, I can start EGC TV and I can begin working on, uh, you know, Age of Empires and, and hope that that goes well, or I can expand my business or I can learn a language. I can do this. You're basically looking at your time and saying, well, I'm going to invest this amount of time into it. And I think the disappointing thing is that, and look, I, I probably shouldn't say too much about it because I, I, I'm very, very close with Pesty. Uh, and, and I don't want to go revealing his things, but he cares a huge amount about EGC TV. When he started EGC TV, it was back in Age of Empires three days. It was incredibly small over there, and he, he ran some, some pretty big tournaments for the size of the community and began to build it up. And he was investing a huge amount of money. And th there's no question in my mind, it has always been at a loss. There is a world where it does eventually turn around, but the goal is not that it becomes a, a successful project. Obviously, that's one of the goals, but that's not the primary goal. The primary goal is, is to be able to intertwine and to intermingle with a passion that he's got in a way where he can support the community as well. If you think about it from the perspective, like imagine, I'm not, I'm not saying Pesty's a billionaire, okay? Just hold on. Imagine you've got a billion dollars, right? And you have got a hobby that's, that's really niche. Maybe, you know, playing Age of Empires. There you go. And, and you're, you're, you're disappointed because there's not enough content for Age of Empires on Twitch. What do you do? You start donating subs or you start paying for show matches. And that's essentially what happened with Pesty. Um, th th there's plenty of people that do this. I, I remember uh, hearing about a, a big show match that happened in Age of Empires 2. I think it was like a $5,000 show match between Viper and maybe like Viper and Leary or Viper and Hera or something like that. And it, it was huge. It had uh, tens of thousands of people watching th this this show match. And it was just set up by somebody in the community. And that's just a person who had plenty of, of resources to do that. And someone who enjoys Age of Empires. And they didn't do it for their own personal gain. They just wanted to... They're basically like paying money to see people f fight against each other, basically. With all these silly rules. It's like, okay, now we're just going to throw the machine gun in, into, the, uh, into, the, into the octagon. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess the, the point that I, I want to make is that while obviously there's an element of business to this, it's almost entirely just about passion. I mean, Pesty walked into this knowing that the the the, the chance of this being a, a successful business venture are, are quite low. For him, it's all about passion. So I, I can 100% understand where he's coming from uh, with, with the, the happiness um, aspect of it. So he says that, I know that this post will have been damaging to me, to EGC TV, to Golden League. And there will be fallout. I might come to regret. I also don't really have a platform to fight back from apart from apart from a Reddit post. So if this gets all misconstrued, I won't be able to correct things. It is what it is. I guess I need to finish by saying what this means for the future, as it does unfortunately necessitate me changing course for my own personal happiness and well-being. First of all, Golden League 2 will go ahead as planned. It will receive all of our energy and passion and love. We will try to make it our best event Age of Empires 4 has seen, like we do for every event. Maybe we'll pull it off, maybe we'll fall short, but we'll do our very best truly. After Golden League 2, things will not proceed as planned. I don't want to go into what was planned for 2023-2024 because it feels vulgar. And the hardest part of all of this is I feel like I'm letting a lot of people down. But both personally and professionally, I'm absolutely gutted to feel unable to press ahead with it. Instead of hosting the 26 weekends of events planned, we will seek to do one or two major events per year. I can't guarantee this because it will depend on whether other stakeholders will accept that altered version or vision rather. I still feel we have a lot to offer this scene and I hope we'll continue to receive the backing to make beautiful and exciting events. I hope that stakeholders will understand and will still love this game and this community and want to help benefit it and do amazing things in it. But regardless, our place in the scene rather than being elevated will become significantly more limited after Golden League 2. I understand some of you may want to reduce your level of monetary support for EGC upon learning this, which is why I would prefer to tell you that rather than mislead the very people that frankly keep us in business. In terms of what will fill the gaps for us or for what I envision being year-round AOE4, we'll have to see. I hope that some of our audience will continue to support us both for our AOE4 content and new adventures too. Maybe that's a little bit of a, a, little bit of a, uh, a, a clue. 
Almost a year ago, I watched Nilly make his infamous speech after N4C about his disappointments, and I cringed. I thought to myself, why would Nilly take this spotlight? Why would Nilly undermine the success of his event like this? When Beastie Cutie made the, his video tearing into Nilly for stealing his moment, I nodded along with him. And yet now, here I am, airing it all out the day before my own event. And now I get it. How incredibly lonely and isolating it can feel trying your very best to do something for the community you love. And how thankless and dejecting it can feel. I wish I could go back and relive those events and view them with the perspective I have now gained and to message Nilly and support him and rally the community to support him too. Now, it's me, the day before my own event, undermining the success of myself and my team, taking the attention away from our casters and players. I hope this community will understand how much I continue to love this community and game and how much I want it to succeed. I hope you'll continue tuning into what will be an incredible event and won't see this post as something that detracts from that. I hope that now you, I've unburdened myself from these feelings that we can put the spotlight back onto our players and our community. So I think in, in closing on that post, Pesty would undoubtedly be feeling so relieved to have gotten that off his chest because he's obviously been feeling that way for quite some time. So first of all, I, I just want to say, Pesty, you're brave for doing what you did, mate. Um, Jeez, where do we go from here? This is tough. I mean... Uh, as, as, as I said, this is the intention is for this to be a serious video, um, and it, it's going to remain that way. But I, I guess we can take a look at some of the comments uh, and, and see what they what, what what they've got. So we've got Robbie Tron here. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, Robbie, Robbie Tron is the co-creator of AOE4 World, which is the the objectively the best Age of Empires 4 stats website in the world. I'm glad you took the time to write down and share these thoughts and hope people take it to heart. You've been carrying the scene on your shoulders like a king and it is completely fair and understandable to expect the community to add momentum and excitement to it, not take away. In a healthy community, it should be possible to take a step back, to take a break and let others step in and fill the void with awesome events. Sadly, that occurs highly unlikely to me and I can understand you feel sadly that hold on sadly that occurs highly unlikely to me and I can understand you feel more stress and responsibility to keep on organizing events but in the end it's not up to you alone to have supportive ecosystem that sprouts great events for what it's worth I'm looking forward and I'm sure I'll be enjoying the coming months now in addition to that we also had people reacting uh off this website uh so we also had some coverage over on uh, on Twitter which I'll now share with you a, a post uh, from somebody uh, who you may be familiar with. Uh, he goes by The Viper. Uh, and, he, and he posted a, th this meme saying, AoE community, my friends, you bow to no one. Just talking to EGC TV. So I think that, that that's quite beautiful, quite telling. Um, you know, Viper bringing out the, the hot memes, but at the same time, yeah, it, it's, a, it's, it's, it's true. Um, we've got another co comment in here from Age of Estra Tagax. I hope I pronounced that correctly. He said, a little sad reading this. So first thing, thank you to you, to Lord Petito and all the other names behind the scenes. Literally, you are one of the most important pillars on this scene and we're lucky to have you. You don't know anything to this community. There are no words to express how much you contributed to the Age of Empires 4 community just for passion's sake. And if you feel the need to stop, if the project isn't worth your time or money or is negatively impacting your mental health, that's the big one for me, imp impacting the mental health. Uh, or happiness or, or whatever you have the right to stop you have made more than enough and way more than anyone can ask thank you again because one time is not enough that being said i think that the rules controversy is a case of suffering from success golden league one was one of the biggest tournaments ever it was amazing so i think a lot of people saw it like the standard main event and believe that all those rules experimentation belong to a smaller tournaments so that i to that i said effort it's your tournaments your rules as i said before you don't know anything to this community um so yeah and I, I mean i guess at this point we probably has, haven't even really mentioned um you know the the, the whole con controversy in air quotes um so essentially as, as mentioned earlier in the post um I, actually we, we never even went over it so the qualifying which is happening this weekend which will be happening when this video go, goes live uh the games are vanilla that means that you play by the rules that are set uh stage one which will be happening next week uh, no stone walls. So you've got no stone walls, uh, no stone towers, which is uh, stone towers are normal, but no stone walls at all, and no keeps. That's pretty big. Stage two, which will be three extra villages. You start the game, you just get three extra vills. That's it. And then stage three, 
some civs banned on each map. So the way it's going to work is that pro players are going to rate which civilization is the best on that map. And then the, then EGC TV will ban the top four civilizations on each map. So that's the way it's going to work. And then w once the finals, and then you get points for how well you do in those stages. And then in the finals, it's back to vanilla. Uh, so th that that's essentially the controversy. So I'm curious what you guys think. Did EGC TV make the right decision in coming out and doing this publicly? Personally, I think he did. Um, or, or, or Pesty did. Just simply because I know what it's like to have that kind of burden. And to hold it in, it's just, it, it makes you resent what you're doing. It really, it just, it makes you resent it. And it, the, the hard part is it starts out as a passion and it starts out as as uh, this this whole, this love. And it turns into resentment. And the last thing you want to do is think about it. And you wake up in the morning and you, you don't want to read your emails. You don't want to read your Discord DMs. You don't want to do anything. So I think this is a great step forward for Pesty from that aspect. Whether it was the right decision with regard to the success of the tournament obviously remains to be seen. I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm definitely going to be watching the tournament. Once again, I'll be leaving a link in the description to the event. But I want to know what you guys think as well. It's been a bit of a longer video, uh, but as, as always, I'm curious to know what you guys think. You're going to be watching AGC TV? Anyway, I'll leave a link in the description. And uh, of course, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.